Hi everyone, my name is Liad Ofek, um, and in the next session, we're gonna talk about multi-cloud, our uh, multi-cloud portfolio, and specifically, we're gonna go into a deeper discussion into Cloud Connect, and the use cases, the products behind it, and some uh, cool technical capabilities that uh, we've introduced. I also hear I'm having with me here some of my team. I have Elisa, she's the product manager for the CSR, 1000V, I have Sentil, our, one of our engineering architects for the CSR, and Fan, our TME, so they're gonna help me if you have really tough questions. So uh, free, uh, feel free to ask any questions you have and see if you're getting ready. Okay, so again, my name is Liad, I'm responsible for our cloud and virtualization solutions. I spoke with you in the past around some of our virtualization solutions and cloud, and today, uh, we're gonna give you some updates uh, about our Cloud Connect uh, as part of the multi-cloud uh, solutions. So first, let's start with some statistics, right? Uh, and probably a lot of these are uh, not, uh, uh, you know, news for you, but uh, well, definitely, you go back to your physics that's right. <laughs> so you know already that we are living in a multi-cloud world, right? When we talk with our customers, they are telling us, we are ready to move to the cloud. Uh, we are migrated. However, it's gonna be more than one cloud different type of cloud, SaaS, IIS, multiple IIS, and still private cloud as well. Uh, and, you know, we have uh, uh, on our list of projects for our IT, you know, cloud migration is on the top. So that's something that a lot of our customers are spending time strategizing and realizing, oh, how do I do it? How do I work in this new environment? And how do I make it in the most efficient way? However, when we look into a multi-cloud environment, there are multiple challenges, right? A lot of network administrators saying, hey, if I move to multi-cloud, I need to be able to define my strategy. How do I get there? If I have a new app, do I start first in the cloud or I start it on-prem and then move to the cloud? If, uh, if I already have a lot of assets, what do I move first? How do I move it? When do I get rid of it uh, on my private data center? Uh, what's that journey? That, that's uh, one of the key questions. And when I do that, I need to connect my physical network, my on-prem network to the cloud how do I do it securely, securely right? How, do I, how, do I, how can I maintain the same capabilities that I have on my private network in the cloud as well? Then we look at the applications themselves. How do I protect not only my application, but my endpoints and my users when they access the cloud over public uh, uh, connections? And then when I look on the, on the applications itself, how do I migrate the applications in the, in the best way that uh, make it smooth, make it very without causing any downtime to my users. So, so in order to look on these multiple pain points when customers look in, into the cloud, we've created the multi-cloud portfolio with our sets of solutions and services around that cloud journey. There are different areas, cloud advisory, cloud connect, cloud consume, and cloud protect. And what exactly are there? Right, cloud advisories, a set of services that are available through Cisco Advanced Services or our partners that can enable our customers to go through that journey, starting from the early phases on defining the strategy, uh, understanding what are the local assets, where do we want to go, how do we go there, and then they would take our customers through that journey with a lot of consultancies, uh, a lot of uh, uh, people that can actually do the work for you and maybe even manage it later. Cloud Connect, which is a the topic for today, is all about solutions on how do I extend my network securely into the cloud while maintaining high application experience, right? And we're gonna go deeper on how we actually do it. Protect are sets of security services that enable you to protect both the connectivity, the data, the applications, and the users. And Cloud Consumes, our set of solutions that enable you to, that they help you to migrate. How do I deploy the applications? How do I monitor them? How do I monitor their performance? And then how can I react and, and, and fix any issues that arises? If you look on the products under this four, here are some of the list of the products that we have available today. But this is just the beginning. We already have on each one of these pillars a lot of other products that are actually joining the party. And what does it mean when I have multiple products in each one of them, right? What we do is we actually 
uh, work together between the products, between multiple part of the solutions to make sure the products work well together. They can be managed or orchestrated. Uh, they can actually, we can correlate some information from one solution to the other. Uh, our advanced services and partners can actually have, have design guides that can help our customers to deploy each one of these solutions uh, as part of their journey. So as I mentioned, in addition to the product themselves, there's a lot of design guides, deployment guides, best practices that we created around these uh, solutions, uh, which eventually remove all the obstacles and lowering the risks of actually migrating uh, to the cloud. Okay, any questions so far? before we go into Cloud Connect. Make sense? Second time you heard that today already? Third? You may hear that a little bit more today. That's a hot topic and one of the key messages here at Cisco Live. So let's, let's focus on connectivity and what does it mean, right? Um, if I look on my own prime network, I have a lot of branches, data center, campuses, and I want to expand into the cloud, into multiple clouds, right? So some of the challenges is, first of all, how do I make it easy? Because there's a lot of complexity. Each one of these clouds is a little bit different in the capabilities that it offers, the limitations it has, and it's very different than what I'm used to on-prem. And in the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about some of the routing challenges, high availability challenges. However, it has a lot of things that we don't have on the on-prem. There's a lot of automations, a lot of uh, DevOps tools and capabilities we can leverage for networking as well, which maybe on the on-prem network are not there. So we'll see how how these, you know, we were able to use that. When you have multiple environment, multiple on-prems, multiple clouds, inconsistency in policies, security policies and capabilities, how do I define the applications? How do I define the users, the subnets, the VPCs, the VNets? All these may be different in every one of these environments and my on-prem. So just may, you know, being able to translate and build a consistent policy is another major challenge. And the, the last thing is performance, right? If I'm moving my applications and I have users around the world, how, do I, how can I assure performance? What is the best path to reach my destination, if it's a SaaS or an IAS? If my applications are on the east coast of the US or in Europe or you know, in the far east, and you know, what's, what's my connectivity and how do I get there in order to get the best performance possible? When things change, when applications move, Again, these are a lot of questions and a lot of challenges that network admin needs to address when they look into connectivity into multiple clouds. So let's look on some use cases and some of the solutions we have in Cloud Connect. The first one we're saying, hey, I have my, you know, just a simple, simplify a version. I have some branches, I have some data centers. You see our routers there, 4K is in the branch, SR1K here. I'm gonna extend to an, an infrastructure as a service. Here in example, you can see VPCs for Amazon, but it's the same as for VNet with Azure. The CSR 1000V enable us to actually install an instance of iOS in a VPC. It's the exact same iOS that I have on my branch at my data center. So it enables you to create that secured VPN into the VPC, but it only also enables me to connect multiple VPCs together. Um, at the other end, you, I can have a CSR, but I also can have part of the cloud infrastructure, a virtual gateway case of, uh, of AWS uh, or, or Azure. So I can create also connectivity from a CSR to a non-Cisco. Uh, uh, enables you to solve all the routing challenges across VPCs, extending routing into the cloud. I can connect from my data center, or I can also can connect directly from the branch, right? No different from that perspective. And I can uh, enjoy all the rich functionalities and rich features that we, we are used to have in iOS on the on-prem into the cloud as well. Second use case is related to our acquisition of Viptela, right? When you look on SD-WAN, extension of SD-WAN into the cloud is another key use case, right? So if I have multiple paths to get to my data center from the internet, MPLS, multiple areas, why can't I do the same to the cloud, right? So with Viptela VH cloud capabilities, I can also launch a VH cloud instance, which is a virtual version of VH that you can have on-prem, and then extend your SD-WAN fabric into the cloud. So I can have an internet connection, I can have an express route, a direct connect over a private link to the cloud. 
And then I can have multiple paths. Maybe I can have multiple ISPs. And using SD-WAN access to the cloud, again, you can choose the best path, ensuring high application performance when you connect to the cloud. Uh, just one question for me. The two offerings are quite similar. So you're just giving your customers choices. Yeah, You can go with a, let's say, Webtela solution or with a traditional solution, however you like it, yeah? Or both. Or both, yeah. Or you can even go with Firepower. Yeah, I have a CSR from the data center maybe and Webtela from the branch. In both cases, you are deploying your existing routing platforms as VMs in the cloud. Correct. Okay. And we're going to talk about how do we automate that, actually, because uh, we make it easier as well. But a good Good, uh, great comment, and we're actually going to make it even easier because we are integrating the Viptela software into iOS. And towards the summer time frame, you will see a CSR that has the Viptela code integrated into it. So it's going to be one product. So the CSR with V is going to merge. So you can uh, just instantiate one uh, image, and you can choose if you want to enable SD-WAN or other functionality. So at that time, we'll actually see the documentation for Viptela. Yeah, documentation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's part of the migration as well. There should be documentation now, but, uh, but yes. Actually, the sd wan feature will just become a feature in your product, yeah? Correct. Yes, okay. that's right. Uh, now, yeah. you want to explore that path a little bit more, <laughs> or do you want to move on? I want to move on because I have a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't think the focus on, is on Viptela. We can do that as well. There's a lot of sessions by the way here and we can schedule as well. Uh, we shared our roadmap on Viptela integration. There's also integration on the management with vManage and DNA Center. These are things that are coming as well. But now I have an internet connection at the branch. <coughs> we also need some security <coughs> because if I have direct internet access at the branch, why can't I access some SaaS or some other website directly from the branch? And in order to do that, you need some security. You need to protect the users at the branch. You need to protect that. Therefore, we actually have an integration with our Umbrella service. So now VEDGE at the branch can redirect requests to Umbrella, and then you can have all their Umbrella functionalities, URL filtering, and, and, uh, and, 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 and all these capabilities, and then go to the, um, to the website. So that's also in addition to extension and extending SD-WAN to the cloud, we can also now have a linkage to Umbrella service, uh, which eventually enable us to have a direct internet access. Okay, so these are some of the top use cases, which eventually enables us to extend our private network, uh, leveraging existing investments. So it's very familiar for those that have Viptela or have Cisco IOS on-prem, they'll be very familiar. You can actually now have consistent security policies because the same tools that enables you to have consistent policies in a network now can also be used in the cloud. And we're gonna touch some of that uh, in the next few slides. I talked about uh, application experience, visibility, best path, all the, the great things that Viptela add now can be extended, and all can be centrally or orchestrated. If it's vManage for Viptela, or the rest of the tools that we have for iOS, um, you may be familiar with DNA Center. These are things that we're adding as well into the cloud. These are things that are coming in the future as well. So let's go a little bit deeper into the CSR, right? CSR 1000V, again, it's not a new product. It's been in the market for several years. Um, it's a virtual uh, a, a router, a virtual iOS that can run on almost anything. You know, it can run on a VMware ESXi, KVM. It runs on our Cisco NFVIS, part of our enterprise NFV solution, or the CSP2100 as well. But it can also support on multiple clouds. So the CSR is officially supported on, uh, Azure, on the Microsoft Azure, on uh, AWS, Google Cloud, part of our partnership that's coming in Q3 CY18, but also uh, uh, Alibaba, AliCloud as well. And we're adding more and more cloud as well. From a performance perspective, you know, uh, we can go up to 10 gig and, and we are investing more, working with these cloud providers to, get to, to reach even higher speeds. I'm gonna talk about some scale-out capabilities that can actually pick up multiple CSR images if you wanna go to higher speeds than 10 gigs. Um, um, from a licensing perspective, very flexible. It's all subscription-based. You can go with a one, three, five-year subscription. Uh, we support smart licensing. Um, and programmability and automation are key. And I'm gonna talk about some of these capabilities because you move to the cloud, you wanna make it simple, you wanna use a lot of these DevOps tools, all are actually supported with the CSR. 
How can you find it? If you go to AWS, the marketplace, you just search and you'll find multiple options for CSR. At, at uh, AWS, you can actually acquire a CSR on an hourly basis. So if you're a startup or you're a development group, you just wanna launch some instances for a few days, you can do that and only pay for the time you use as well. So you can either we support uh, an hourly, an annual basis, or bring your own license. So you can also purchase from Cisco, from our partners' licenses, and just use them at the cloud, or you go directly to the market. So the hourly base works for an hour, or how should? You can launch a CSR for four hours, and then you'll be charged for four hours. If it goes down, you're done. Okay. Same thing with uh, Azure. You go uh, to the Azure marketplace, search, and you'll see it. You have a lot of options here. Again, different speeds, different uh, CPU, different memory. On uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, we only support uh, bring your own license, but we're working with them to enable also a pay-as-you-grow model as well. Okay, so let's look into the deployment options within either you know, Azure, uh, AWS, Google, and others. So there's two kind of like major ma ma main options to do that. One is to deploy CSR on VPCs or VNets where your applications are, right? You can do that. You can have one or two for high availability. Another option is on a transit hub router. So your entry point into the cloud, you can put a CSR there. And we're gonna talk about the differences, you know, if you don't have it on the on next to application versus you do. Yes. Uh, the reason for the transit hub is because VPCs can't chain traffic, right? Yes, and I'm gonna go deeper into that. That's great, exactly. So let's first talk about high availability, right? We've been talking with a lot of customers that are migrating to the cloud. They start with extending the data center. They're not looking on branches or anything. Just how can I extend my data center? It started with just bursting if I need more capacity, but now a lot of organizations are just looking to migrate and move into the cloud. Data center needs to be highly available, so my cloud infrastructure needs to be highly available. In that case, just one CSR is great, but I, I need a backup. If, even though it's just software, things may happen, so I want a second CSR. Right? In the physical world, you use HSRP, very easy, but in the cloud, it's a little bit more complex because, for example, they don't support multicast in the cloud infrastructure, so HSRP cannot be used. Uh, in addition, there's multiple subnets with route tables, so it's not, the, the, you, know, you don't have control on your switches or, or things like that, it's mainly the cloud infrastructure. So what we have done is we enable a high availability solution that enables to use BFD between the two CSRs, and then when the CSR detects a failure, it, there, it can actually initiate a script that then changes the route for these subnets. So now they would know to, to reach the, uh, the backup CSR. Okay, and this is only, also can be automated. Uh, same thing we do for Azure. Uh, a little bit different here, we're using IPsec um, because uh, GRE is actually blocked in, in Azure. It can be a little bit different, so we have to use IPsec. Uh, and here we're using uh, Azure UDR. These are the, the routes that are defined here. But again, similar model that the CSR can call Azure API to change and update the routes when a failure occurs. Okay, so you, you, the, the results are high availability, very similar to what you, have, you do in a data center. However, there are some a little bit different tools engaging with the infrastructure and making updates, but we've done that, we automated that, and that's available on both of these uh, environments. Let's talk about the problem you just mentioned, right, which is transit routing challenge, right? When I, when I joined the team and I looked, I said, this looks like a, a basic routing problem that we solved years ago, but in the cloud, it's not as trivial because the infrastructure was built in a way that it's a shared infrastructure. You need to maintain secured uh, environment between VPCs, between clients. Therefore, there's some limitations. For example, you don't have transit routing. If VPC A want to talk with VPC C, you cannot just very easily enable routing through the cloud infrastructure. You need to, to create some peering and up to uh, up to very recent, in AWS you could not peer between regions. They only enabled that recently. So several limitations on that. Uh, so you have several ways. You can do create a full mesh. 
meaning you can, can create peering between each VPC to each VPC. Sounds great, but it's very manual and very complex, right? Very old fashioned way of doing that. You can use your private data center as that transit hub, right? So if I connect every VPC to my own prem and then do the routing there, that's one way, but it doesn't seem very efficient to go back to your data center for every traffic between VPCs. So what we have done, we created what we call the transit VPC design. In this case, going back to the option we said, you choose one VPC and dedicate it as the transit VPC. That's your entry point. And each VPC will connect to that transit VPC. Again, you can have high availability if you want to have two CSRs. And then we enable dynamic routing the same way that you would do on your private network. And then VPC A can talk to VPC B, that's with, with routing over, over here. And we actually are working on enable DMVPN as well. And when DMVPN is enabled, they will be able to also talk directly, create a VPN on the spot and, and talk directly. All of that is actually automated through scripts we've built into both AWS and Azure. So you don't have to know exactly, even though there is a design guide, everything is documented how to do it, but you can actually go and initiate some Lambda functions on AWS. It says, I want a, a WC, maybe it, you, you enter some inputs, and then it, go, it knows how to spin up this transit VPC. And then when each VPC that you spin up, you can add a tag, and then it will automatically create the VPN and enable routing. So all of that is fully automated. Uh, but the packets do go through the CSR 1000V, which well, means, yeah, which yes. means that Amazon is charging you for the CPU cycles. Right? That, that's right, unless you use DMVPN. Again, DMVPN enables you to create one to, to yeah, another. Then the packets are going through CSR 1000V, which is sitting in each VPC, and yes. you're so burning CPU need, cycles there. In this case, this is what I mentioned. In this, you can have CSR just in the transit VPC, and have a virtual gateway or others on the spoke, and it would work. But if you have a CSR also at the spokes, then you can enable the MVPN, you can have higher features and things like that. And also, you are paying for the traffic twice, right? Because it traverses two VPCs. If you're going like that, is that right? Yeah. Yes, the traffic will be charged on the egress point of the VPC. But exactly. Yeah, so that's another reason people want to move to uh, all CSR based trend VPC, which you can do DMVPN, can reduce the one hop. And also, we can move from, uh, if you think about trend VPC, it's a hub. Everybody needs to talk to this hub. What if I have like 100 VPC? What will be my bottleneck look like? And then I move to the direct VPN, and well. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's the bottleneck. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, I got the signal that I need to speed up. So, another key capability is once you have a CSR, is to actually extend seg uh, segmentation used by VRF. So with these capabilities, you can actually choose a VPC to be on a separ separate VRF. And then within the CSR, you can create multiple VRFs, can be an extension from your own prem to that transit VPC. And then each VPC can actually be associated with a separate v VRF. So that's uh, a great capability is to create that segmentation if I have a development VPC, a sales VPC, or others. Yeah. So you would put the IPsec tunnel between VPC and the transit VPC into a VRF and then pull that as a multi-protocol BGP with MPLS tagging, whatever, back home. Uh, just, I have one question regarding the previous session that we had. There was um, a question regarding the Salesforce integration and the lack of getting flows out of the cloud. If I run here the iOS code, I can get flow data directly from the cloud right. and see what is leaving the cloud instance to my environment. Yes, uh, exactly. NetFlow information or others. VPC properly protected so that it, it can only talk to the transit V. Yeah, okay. I want to speed up. I talked about scale out. So I mentioned that each CSR potentially can go out to 10 gig. Again, performance may differ between different cloud environments and different features that you would use. 10 gig is probably the most optimal ways, but if you use encryption, you know, uh, I know on AWS we go to five gig, uh, Microsoft Azure, we're working with them, right now it's about two and a half gig. Um, so if you need more, if you need 40 gig, or wh what do you do? So we had this use case with some of the retail environment, they said, hey, during the holiday times, we need more bandwidth. So what we've done, we build this scale-up solution where 
you can actually, again, using Lambda scripts, you can monitor the throughput of the CSR, and based on a certain threshold, automatically spin up additional CSR, and also change the routing and the VPN. So these are capabilities that are uh, coming out soon as part of the scripts that are available, both on AWS, it will come to Azure as well. But then you can enable it, define a threshold, and then, again, usually using hourly billing, you can burst, add more capacity, and take it down when you don't need it. So again, these are capabilities that are available with virtual routers, which are different than physical, but it's a great solution when you expand to the cloud and you only have burst periods when you need that high capacity. Uh, so for the red ones, you could actually use the instance from the marketplace that's built by the hour. Okay, now, as you said, once I have CSR here, a lot of iOS features, you know, a, a NetFlow capabilities, our ATC func functions, QoS, all of these are available. This is why we believe it's good to have it everywhere. You know, one of the use cases we see is software company that want to launch a SaaS service leveraging AWS or Azure. They create multiple VPCs. They put a CSR on each one of them to get the rich capabilities across the infrastructure, the right segmentation, QoS, security, across all the VPCs. So again, all the, the capabilities you have on-prem can be, be, be exactly the same, QoS, um, security, right? When you look at it, access list, VRF I mentioned, firewall, um, we can see Snort, Webfoot, and, um, and Umbrella for the CSR are coming. But another key uh, thing that is available, you probably heard about it from the other sessions, ETA or encrypted traffic analytics, is also supported in iOS. So uh, great integrated security within the CSR, even though we do have also other security products, if you're looking on ASAV or next generation file of V that you can actually launch next to a CSR if you need even higher uh, uh, security needs. Just, uh, sorry, I, I know you're running short. Just on the firepower base, which is Snort, yeah? This will be running natively on the CSR? Or is it always an extra image? Yes. So, Elisa? So it's not the firepower uh, here. It's a Snort open source code integrated within the CSR itself. Um, so Snort runs as, um, uh, as part of iOS XE on the physical routers, the ISR 4Ks, and it runs also as part of the CSR uh, VNF. So that's what Liad is talking about. Ah, okay, makes sense. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I also want to t touch this part of uh, the security solutions we have is the extension of TrustSec, um, which means you can create policies of which users can actually connect to which VPC. So by extending TrustSec and integration with ICE into the VPC with the CSR, you can have an end-to-end -end segmentation using uh, TrustSec capabilities. And later on, we're gonna integrate some of the SDA functionalities and automation as well. So now you'll be able to extend SDA to the cloud as well. Okay, I'm gonna move quickly here. I talked about some automations that we have. So with AWS, we had, I mentioned we're using several scripts uh, and templates. So uh, CloudFormation, AWS can create multiple templates such as uh, Transit VPC, Scaleout, using also configs that are available in Lambda. So we have all of that available for our customers, but our customers can create their own as well. So if you have development capabilities and you're familiar with that, that's available as well. With Azure, it's the Azure Resource Manager template that is also available for scripting and automation. Uh, and the last thing on automation is actually on the CSR itself, we are enab enabling guest shell. So you can actually uh, create and run scripts on a, on a, in an LXC container in iOS. And then you can monitor some APIs inside and, and execute CLI commands or things like that on the spot itself. So again, you can program outside on the cloud infrastructure or you can program scripts on the CSR itself. So very flexible. We have customers using it for many use cases. But again, when you move to the cloud, these are the things that customers are looking for uh, from a DevOps capabilities. I want to touch uh, a little bit on the Viptela. I know we, we talked about it. One of them is the umbrella integration. Again, this is where the vEdge at the branch can in, uh, intercept the DNS queries using our deep uh, packet inspection and then forward uh, all the requests to the umbrella service. Uh, and, and there you can create the blacklist, you know, which you can access or not. 
Uh, later on, we're adding more capabilities of actually inspecting the data and protecting for malware and things like that. These are things that are coming with the umbrella service. And I mentioned also the ability of uh, VEDGE and extending SD-WAN in the cloud. Some of the key capabilities we have with Viptela is the ability to use the vManage platform and automate that provisioning uh, on AWS. So what you would do on vManage, you would add your credentials to AWS or Azure. Uh, they can communicate. You can say, okay, these are my branches and data center uh, uh, V edges. And then when you, uh, it can detect your instances once you have all the credentials and then fully automate, launch the right uh, V edges, enable transit VPC, same capabilities, all fully automated, and then extend all the policies, all the SD1 policies into the VPCs. The last thing, and I know uh, we need to finish, what about SaaS? We talked about best path uh, capabilities, which is one of the key capabilities of SD-WAN. With our uh, Vitella products, you can actually define multiple SaaS services, Office 365, Salesforce, and each VEdge can actually monitor and connect and find what's the best path for me to reach Office 365. Is it from the, my direct internet access? Or maybe going back to the data center, or maybe going back to a different branch and go out from there to reach Office 365. So it's really an extended extension of SD-WAN into SaaS applications as well. <laughs> okay, so just to conclude, with Cloud Connect, we have a proven methodology that we have done a lot on-prem. We're extending it with ease of management, integrated security, seamless integration into multiple env environments with a lot of automation and scripting, extending the best-in-class SD-WAN, uh, and really getting a lot of flow, flow monitoring capabilities from the instances we have. A lot of information can be found here. We're going to upload the, the presentations.